Hello, sixth graders. It is me. I decided today that we could try something a little bit different, and seeing as I have all those awesome questions you guys submitted, I figured we might as well try to get some good use out of them. So, today I have with me a whole list of the questions you guys put in, and we are going to go through a bunch of the ones that I picked out. So, we're calling this Fan Mail with Mr. Hora, and if you guys like this and have a good time with it, then... Maybe for the rest of the year, I can try making a few more of these. So, I've got three questions from each class. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Our first question today comes from Gabriel in second block. Gabriel asks, how did Adolf Hitler die? So... In the spring of 1945, it was becoming obvious to just about everyone that Germany was going to lose the war. Hitler had turned the Russians against him, and the United States had joined the war on the side of the Allies, and had vowed that they would make sure that Hitler was defeated before they did anything else. So Germany was finding that it was being attacked from the east by the Russians and from the west by the Americans and British. And quickly the German armies were being defeated and being pushed back into Germany. Adolf Hitler had known that he had done a number of horrible, horrible things during the war. And that if he was to be captured, he would either be killed on the spot or would be put into jail for the rest of his life. Not wanting either of those things to happen, Hitler and his recently married wife, Eva Braum, both committed suicide in Hitler's bunker in Berlin. Now, a fun little story about that bunker. Hitler committed suicide underneath a old German painting of Germans, Germany's Emperor Frederick the Great. Now, the reason why that painting is important is because in the past, Germany had been in another similar war against most of Europe. And that painting of Frederick was painted after an event called the Brandenburg Miracle, where the former Tsar of Russia died and the new Tsar, Peter, liked the Prussians and liked Frederick and did not want Prussia to be destroyed. So he dropped out of the war and Prussia was able to win. Hitler had been hoping something similar would happen in this war. When Roosevelt died, he was hoping that the Allies would fall apart. However, this did not happen and Germany ended up being defeated by the Alliance of the Americans, the British, and the Russians. Our next question comes from Emily in fourth block. Emily asked, how did the government recruit animators like Walt Disney to make propaganda for the government? Well, like anything else, the government can pay companies to do a job. Just like how car companies were brought on to make tanks and planes the government hired animation studios and famous artists to make songs, posters, and animation to help sway public opinion during the war. Now, the interesting thing is that Warner Brothers, who, among many, many other things, are the creators of the Looney Tunes, were very much wanting to create these videos and these animations even without the government telling them to because the Warner Brothers, Jack and Harry Warner, both of which really did not like Hitler and they were trying to make these propaganda films even before the United States joined the war. So for a lot of animators it wasn't even just that they were paid to they wanted to support the United States and wanted to do something to stop Hitler. All right, 
Next up from Third Block, Lucas asks, how did World War II end the Great Depression? So, we talked about this a bit in class, and I don't know if we ever really got to talk about the answer, but to sum it up quickly, wars create a lot of jobs. All right, so even though during the Great Depression people weren't buying cars or other products, when the war started, the government needs supplies. They need tanks. They need vehicles. They need guns, ammo. The government needs all these things, and what the government does is they either hire companies or they recruit companies to go out and make these things. So a company that used to make cars for people might start making tanks or jeeps or even airplanes in their factory. And all of this manufacturing needed people. People were needed to work on the assembly lines and make all these supplies. So the companies were getting a lot of money from the government to make these products. And so they hired a lot of workers. And what happened is unemployment went from upwards of 25% when the depression was at its worst down to about 2%. So almost everyone who wanted one could get a job. And that's that helped people start making money again. People then were able to start spending money. And so that's how not only the depression ends, but people after World War II start having a lot more money that they can spend and look to buying cars, houses, and other new things again. All right, we will do one more question for this installment, and then I'll break up the videos to make it a bit more manageable. So, Bailey from Fifth Block asks about how animals served in World War II. Great question, Bailey. So, compared to World War I, animals were a lot less important. World War I had taught the world a lot of things. One of them is that fighting on horseback does not work as well when the other side has machine gun nests set up. So animals played a lot smaller of a role on the battlefield. Famously, when Poland was being invaded by Germany, they were still sending out men on horseback charging into the German tanks. Needless to say, the tanks won. However, this is not to say that animals didn't play any job in World War II. In fact, animals served in a lot of different positions. Donkeys, horses, and mules were still used in situations where cars and jeeps simply couldn't go as animals of burden who would pull carts and supplies. And pigeons were actually used to transport messages. So soldiers would have a box that had a bunch of carrier pigeons in it and they would write a message tie it to the pigeon's leg and then the pigeon would be trained to fly back to a nest and that message would then get to the rest of the army and other than that there weren't a lot of animals that were directly fighting. Units still had dogs, but animals had really been replaced by mechanized warfare. So trains, cars, tanks, planes were all replacing the jobs that animals used to fill. And that makes the first batch of questions, but don't worry, I've still got a bunch more here. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please let myself and Mrs. Lewis know. I would love to keep doing these for you guys for the rest of the year. Um, and if there are any other questions you have, uh, either email them to me, 
or comment them down below, and if I see one that I really like, I will try to get to it. Alright, thank you guys for tuning into this little experiment, and let me know what you thought. As always, I hope you and your families are safe, happy, and healthy, and have a great day.